love the music that we sang to God be the glory and Haley followed it with God is working in us today he's trying to touch us to love us and work within us that's one of the things that uh, I like about our faith that we know that God is working he's working with us the title of the message was how do you spell joy does anybody know how do you spell joy well I spell it J-O-Y but I'm going to talk about it Jesus, others, and you today the um, <clears throat> The, the, the scripture that Bonnie read, the hundredth psalm, the first verse tells us that it's a joyful time because we know that God is working for us. The second thing it says that uh, he loves us and takes care of us. And the fourth and the fourth and fifth verse tells us one of the things that we know that God provides for us is salvation, mercy, and faithfulness. And in Psalms 98, it says, Sing to the world a new song. We sang that one today, Joy to the World. Joy. In verse 2 in Psalms 98, it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy or holy and arm have worked throughout him. If salvation for him. And the Lord has made the salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. That's why we sang the joy to the world in the, in the Christmas season. Because we knew that God had come. <clears throat> So how do we spell Jesus? I mean, how do we spell joy? We spell it with the first letter, J, is for Jesus. In John 15, 9 through 11, is the scripture I'm going to share with you this morning. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you that this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, that you love one another as I have loved you. <clears throat> One of the things that doubt tells us is very simple, that God loves us. And his love is so wonderful and so overwhelming that we can understand it. This is the joy that he shares with us, his love. I was up this morning at about six o'clock and I turned on the TV and I was listening to <clears throat> Charles Stanley. And it was surprising that he talked about the same thing that I just said, the love of Jesus Christ and what it means to us. First Peter 1, eight through nine says, though you have not seen him, you loved him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. Why do you say that? For you and I are receiving the end results of our faith and the salvation of our souls. The joy 
is produced is unspeakable and full of glory. And this joy is, is so dear and so deep and so wonderful it cannot even be expressed. Do I have this thing on? Can you hear? Okay. All right. I didn't know whether I turned it on or not or they had turned it on back there for me. I thank you. I hate this because when I started here some 20 some years ago I could read the little print and a little words and I can hardly read this at all even with glasses or bows that magnify it 300 times and if I hold it close enough to it it's supposed to do it. Luke 2 says the angels the angels said don't be afraid I bring you good news that will cause great joy in all people today in the town of David a savior has been born to you and this is the full the blessings and the Messiah he is God that was the greatest event in history it was a message of good tidings of great joy that you and I had in this but the greatest message came later on when he died on the cross and rose again our joy if we are to believe in him is that of Christ Jesus living in his life through us and it, it, it is not defeated by any circumstances of life that we face the joy that God loves us so much, he creates a feeling inside of us that we can do anything if we believe in him and love him. Colossians 1.11 says, For in him, Jesus, we are strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, with all patience and long-suffering, with just joyfulness that's joy and that's what we have in Jesus Christ if we love him the way we should because he loves us <clears throat> the joy in our living if we become part of our life with Jesus Christ we're going to have a joy that we cannot express or even imagine what it is if you have received God's grace and mercy his love then we need to share it that's one of the things that the Bible teaches us even in the Old Testament through the New Testament we, this, some, what we read today in some of the scriptures from the Old Testament was God's love poured out to us and we're supposed to share it with one another and share it with others if you've received God's grace and mercy his love if you have received this and you understand what I'm trying to say to you if you've received his grace and his love and his mercy, then it's automatic. You should share that love that you have for him. That's what God expects of us. That's what he wants us to do. You and I have a message to share. And today is the first day of a new year. And we need to share it with somebody. Somewhere needs to hear of God's love for us. So that leads us to the O. For others. O for others. In Mark 12, 30, verses 30 and 31, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind and with your all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. 
there is no commandment than greater than these. And these came from the Old Testament and the New Testament. It can be found. You see, we see the love of God for us. But we see love again now in the second part of this. We see that we're, to, and we're supposed to love others. We're supposed to reach out to someone, a friend, somebody in our family, maybe that doesn't really know God and who he is. We need to share that love that God wants us to share. So who are your neighbors? Well, your neighbors can be most anybody, not just the people that live beside of you, not just the people in this church right now that are sitting in this room with us. And I'm thankful for all of you that came this morning because I told uh, Andrew when he asked me if I'd do it, I said I would. I said uh, it won't be the first time I did it uh, on the Sunday after New Year's uh, Day and New Year's Eve. I said, I realize the crowd will be thin. I said, there will be some people that won't be able to quite make it because of Saturday. But uh, I see there's a lot of people in here today that did make it, and I'm thankful for that. But who are your neighbors? Jesus came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many, even our enemies. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he did not, in verse 17, come to condemn the world but to save the world. God is sitting on the throne <clears throat> and his love for us is overwhelming because we realize that he he loved us in such a way he's always going to be there for us God loves us that much he's going to care for us and believe in us he's going to forgive us if we ask for his forgiveness Paul's letter to the Philippians is called his joy letter. He was in prison, but he spoke of himself as being poured out for others. And Paul was. I've read where that there was a, a, a guard chained to one of his wrists, and this guard himself came to believe in Jesus Christ. He was... <clears throat> We've got to do that. We've got to reach out to others. We've got to pour out our love for others and let them see it. <clears throat> in, in his scriptures, he wrote these words. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with our Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit if any rep, bit hint, tenderness and compassion, then maybe my joy, then make my joy complete by being like minded, having the same love, having one in work spirit and of the same mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambitions or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not living in your own interests, but each of you to be in the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, has the same mind set as Jesus Christ had. <clears throat> That's the key for us in loving others. In our relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. 
and that was love once again. John Wesley's little rules of life were these. Be all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, for all the people you can, as long, so long as ever you can. <clears throat> Philippians 2, 4 says in the King James Version, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And that comes to the last little verse in this. In Matthew 5, 43, 44, says this. You have heard that it was said in the Old Testament, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That was the life that Jesus Christ lived. And that's the life that he expects us to live for others. Even they may not like him. We should be like Christ and have a servant's attitude. Micah 6, 8 says this. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk with your God. And if you do that, the Old Testament words from Micah, if you do that, you will love others even your enemies. I read a little story. <clears throat> the guy's name, he was a, he was a man that uh, has, his wife had passed away and he moved his family, they had a little girl, to a little village and went to farming. <clears throat> and one day another man, a neighbor close to him, killed his little girl the dog attacked her his dog attacked her and killed her and the people in the village decided they would not allow this guy a farmer himself to have any seed for his field he couldn't buy feed, seed for his field couldn't grow anything didn't have anything to grow and it was coming on time to plant Peter Holmes went and took half his seed that he had for his field and planted that farmer's seed for him in his field. And the villagers saw that and wondered what had happened. What had happened was that the man that they hated and the man that killed his dog killed his little girl and gave him seed for his field. And his field was half empty. Mercy requires that we sow our seed in our enemies' fields. The message that you and I have to share with others, even if it's the, it, our enemy, our job and our mercy and grace on our part even though our own fields may be left bare. I do not know I do not know how to tell you to do that. But Jesus Christ does. He knows how to 
tell us in our hearts when we need to help someone that may really be out of our social our, our social areas even though we may have enough and I've seen people go into court and a man charged with murder one of their family members and the mother stay, stand up and say I forgive you I forgive you that's what Jesus Christ makes us do in our hearts if we love others the way we should Our field may be half empty, but we've finished. We've done what God wanted us to do. The last letter is Y, and that's you and me. That's our responsibility. Whatever you do, put yourself third and spell joy. Someone said, as, as this old expression, and it's been used, and I've seen it happen. Someone said a man all wrapped up in himself is a very small package, and that's true. <laughs> and I've seen people like that, and you have too. If they get wrapped up in themselves, Proverbs 23 through 27 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity, and keep your corrupt talk in, from your lips. Let your, eye, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your grades grade directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or left and keep your feet from evil. What he's telling us is don't lose focus on what you're supposed to do and who you're supposed to be. How do we do this? How do we keep our focus on we keep it by looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's the way you do it. And if, if, if our goal is to be more like Jesus, keeping our own our eyes on him, that's the secret. And we understand the will of God for us for what we're supposed to do through the word of God. Sometimes things like that are hard. But you and I need to hear the words of Paul found in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you have a promise that we can do anything we want. But rather it's a promise we can do anything that God wants us to do. Paul was confident God was with him. And he knew that he would be able to do it, not through his own strength, but the strength of the one who lived in him. And Colossians 3, 12 through 14, I'm going to read these words to you. And you've probably heard them before. I would think you have. I've used them in weddings too also. Therefore, in, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, Bear with another, each other, and forget whatever the grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and share. And over all these things, all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Boy, that says it. If we do this, In John eleven fifteen, Jesus said, These things I've spoken to you, that my joy might be in you and me, and that your joy and mine might be found, would be full. <clears throat> John 13, 14 says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved so you must love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. What has he said three times in that letter? In those few words, what did Jesus say three times? Love one another, love one another, love one another. That's what God expects of us because you know what? Love never fails. A pastor went to visit a woman. Uh, she was a crippled woman. She was in bed. She'd been there most of her life, not able to get around and everything. And he ran across the book and he took it for her to, to read. And he told her, he said, I'd like for you to read this book. It's old joy and everything. He said, I want you to see what somebody has written about joy. And she said, I, I really, I really not ought to take the book, sir, she replied. And the pastor replied and asked her, why not? Have you already read it? She said, I've not only read it, I wrote it. It's amazing that this woman crippled from birth understood happiness so well that she was able to write a book on the subject of joy, how she had joy. And the one we follow is the one who loves us, who died for us, rose for us, and had promised us to call the will. We will never leave us and he's waiting it to welcome us into heaven the day that day comes that should fill our hearts with gladness but if we belong to Jesus Christ abiding in him if we stay close to the things of God if we stay in his word we can do anything he commands us to do. Joy is spelled Jesus, others, and you. You can't spell it any other way. If you put yourself further first, others second, and Jesus third, you can't spell joy. You have to put Jesus first and others second. <clears throat> Our joy, if we believe, is that of Jesus Christ living through us through the Holy Spirit.